It was in 2004. He and my mom were on vacation and he had blood in his urine and he was very concerned. He was adamant that he needed to see the doctor right away. They realized it was bladder cancer. I would say that my dad is a very devoted family man, very devoted to the family, to my mom, to my sisters, my brothers and I, and to the grandchildren. He likes adventure, including in technology. So he's 89, but he loves his iPhone. Constantly on his iPhone, checking alerts to see what's going on. Always interested in learning more. In 2015, his bladder cancer spread, so they removed his bladder, one of his kidneys, his ureter, and then they realized he had unrelated prostate cancer. So after my dad's surgery, we had an ostomy nurse that came into the hospital to train us on how to take care of his ostomy bag. And when we got home, we didn't have an, a home health nurse come right away, so we were managing it for a couple days, and I'll tell you what, we were terrified of it. I just kept thinking, I'm gonna be the cause of my dad's death. In the hospital system, we look at the nurses and we feel comforted. So we think, okay, if I mess something up, she's going to help me out. But when you're at home, it's just you. And typically what's going to go wrong seems to always go wrong in the middle of the night. And in the middle of the night, you're just like, oh my gosh, we've got to figure this out. So the first time I changed my dad's bag, it wasn't the middle of the night, but it was 10 o'clock at night. Now, if you've ever seen a wound like that for the first time, it is really jarring. We didn't know what to expect, and when we saw the wound from the surgery, I thought my mom was gonna pass out. I didn't close my eyes, but you feel like you're just like, oh, okay, let's just do it. And it was fine, it was fine. And we all sighed, huge relief once it was done. We thought, okay, we can do this, we can do this. I think when my parents were both really ill at the same time, that was a significant challenge because I felt like I was drowning. I felt like could, I couldn't be enough for them. I felt like I didn't have enough time for my business. I was so worried about them. I was worried about myself. It just felt like I got up every day and I was like, what else can go wrong? And that expression of don't sweat the small stuff is truly how you get through caregiving because you just are like, who cares? <laughs> that literally does not matter. This is what matters. And so your focus stays on your priorities and your values. And you realize that you're living life in a much more fulfilling way because you're living based on your values and your priorities. I think that's really hope, that our ability to stay true to who we are. And so what I did at the beginning of the summer, which actually worked out great, was I got a, a pass to our community outdoor pool, and I would just take that time to float up and down. I would just lay on my back in the water, watch the clouds go by, and that break, which was just really an hour every day, was exactly what I needed, and it made me feel like I wasn't drowning anymore. When you're first beginning your caregiving journey, it's really helpful if you can figure out what it is that makes you feel alive and keep that during caregiving. Tell people about that so they can respect it. So for instance, the swimming for me has been a priority. My parents would always say, did you get to the pool today? Because they knew that's what made me feel alive. So what makes you feel alive is what is important to you. Tell that to other people so that they can make sure that you keep it in your life.